Welcome to Node.js Fundamentals by Strongloop. This is Module 2, Understanding Node.js. You know that Node.js uses JavaScript for programming to provide bindings enabling input and output to sockets, files, and streams. It has a high throughput and non-blocking I.O. and a single-threaded event loop. So, is Node a programming language? Well, kinda. JavaScript is a programming language, and Node.js is server-side JavaScript, but it is also a platform layer with functionality to interact with the operating system, write files, read files, do networking operations, spawn child processes, etc. So although the way that you write Node.js code is just like writing client-side JavaScript, under the hood is a powerful layer with a lot of high-level OS and network functionality. In this module, we'll get a peek under the hood to see how Node.js works. We'll also install and run a Node script using REPL. And finally, we'll explore a bit of NPM, or the Node Package Manager, what it is, how to find it, and how to use it in your plans for world domination. Well, hello world domination anyway. Node.js encapsulates LibUV to handle asynchronous events and Google V8 for JavaScript. LibUV is what abstracts away all of the underlying network and file system functionality on both Windows and POSIX-based systems like Linux and Max OS X. The rest of the Node.js C++ code is the glue connecting these technologies to each other and to the operating system. Additionally, the core functionality of Node.js such as the modules FS, HTTP, Assert, and so on, are part of the core library and written in JavaScript. This combination of technologies, LibUV and V8, in a C++ process, enable the asynchronous event-oriented programming for which Node.js is known. Much of this asynchronous programming is accomplished through callbacks. For example, Reading a file into a buffer happens in a two-step process. In the first step, the request to read the file is made, and in the second step, the callback handles the file buffer or error from the asynchronous file read. Here is the Node.js code that asynchronously reads a file into a buffer. As you can see, the second argument to read file is a callback function which runs after the file is read. The request to read the file goes through Node.js bindings to libuv. Then libuv gives a task of reading the file to a thread. When the thread completes reading the file into a buffer, the result goes to v8 and again through Node.js bindings in the form of a callback with the buffer. In the callback shown, the data argument has the buffer with the file data. Now, LibUV also uses epoll, timers, and other asynchronous solutions depending on the kind of event being handled. The behavior of making the asynchronous request, handling of asynchronous request to delivery of the request's result, is made possible by Node's event loop. In pseudocode, the event loop does the following. While there are events to process, set a variable to go get the next event perform the action requested by that in a thread, and if the thread is complete and there is a callback associated with it, then call the callback. Here's a graph that illustrates what is happening in a Node.js asynchronous call. The JavaScript code makes an asynchronous request with fs.readfile. Node.js passes this request to libuv, which uses operating system-specific methods to complete requests. In part, the method depends on the type of request made, for example, file system, socket, etc. Well, this becomes an event in a queue. The event loop acts on the completed events by calling the callback. There is some simplification here, but this is how Node.js manages asynchronous requests. And because Node.js is asynchronous, Okay, well, there are some synchronous libraries that exist for Node.js, but that's a topic for a later time. For now, suffice it to say, you wouldn't want to use them in your production projects. 
As I was saying, a Node.js process does not end until the last asynchronous event is handled. If it did otherwise, the previous example, where we read the file, would never receive the file. It would have exited after making the asynchronous request. If you create a server in Node.js and are listening on a socket, the act of listening always has an event to establish socket connections. Thus, the following server code will not exit until you call exit. Moving on, REPL. Uh, REPL stands for Read, Evaluate, Print, Loop. Node has a built-in REPL that you can use by going to the terminal and simply typing node. Uh, then at the prompt, you can run commands like a equals the array of 1, 2, 3, or we could set, uh, let's see, a type of object, or do simple math. We, to exit the REPL, just hit Control c twice, which brings you out. Um, you can also create a REPL with Node.js, which is very handy. Uh, let's get back in and set the variable to be required. Like so. You could also embed a REPL in your application to diagnose problems and make it available over a socket connection. For more on that and other cool REPL stuff, check out the REPL API documentation on nodejs.org. Moving on to the Node Package Manager. NPM helps you install and manage dependencies through a file called package.json. Additionally, npm can even set up your package JSON file with the command npm init. And there we are. Now let's create a hello world application and save as index.js. Now suppose we want to use a module to colorize the output of this program. To do this, we can add the following to package.json. After saving the package.json file, back in the terminal, we can install npm. Then back in our index.js, we can require the colors and log it to the console. Save this. And now when we run the program node index.js, ooh, ah, world domination is surprisingly colorful. To find additional modules, go to npmjs.org and look around. Additional commands such as npm help or npm update are very valuable. Now you know a bit more about how Node.js works, how REPL works, and how npm works. You've probably got a sense of the syntax from our code examples and are becoming more familiar with the world of Node. Up next, rhymes with Node. It's time for code, code, and more tasty, delicious, asynchronous code to feed the hungry node republic.